How are you doing, folks? Well, on the continuing hunt for the lost performance on this Volkswagen T3 with a uh, AHU TDI engine in it, I'm going to do a compression test. So let's see what the numbers are. Okay, so I bought this here US Pro diesel engine compression tester. I actually have a petrol engine compression tester. But um, but I bought this one because this one will take the pressures inside a diesel engine. The petrol one would have just gone pop if I tried to use it for this purpose. Anyway, it wouldn't have had all these fittings. So it has a variety of different fittings with different threads to go down into. They're for the glow plug holes and these are for the injector ports. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the glow plugs out and we're going to do it that way. I think that seems to make sense, don't you? Just before I go any further, I'm noticing a bit of wetness down at the uh, bottom of the injector here and I'm just going to dip a bit of cardboard in the wetness and see is it water, diesel or what is it? I'm sure it's diesel, probably coming from, the, from a leaking injector. I don't smell anything off that other than cardboard. <laughs> no, it's only water, that's grand, okay. I don't know how the water got there actually, but it's there nonetheless anyway, so anyway, right, the next thing to do is take the uh, glow plugs out, so uh, I need a deep socket for that. 10 mil deep socket, does the job nicely. Two uh, injector pipes are on the way, in the way on that one. Okay, we're on now. Yeah, that one's wet, but it's, it's just water, as I said. So, uh, yeah, uh, that one there, there's a little rubber spot I have to take off, so I'll get the other two out in the meantime, and I'll get that one. So now it's just a case of finding the correct fitting that goes into the glow plug port. I'm thinking that one there, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. Now, generally speaking, a, a tip for you is if you're removing spark plugs or glow plugs or anything like that from a, an engine, it makes good sense to just uh, blow or uh, blow out around the area if you have compressed air unfortunately i have no compressor up here so it wasn't something i was able to do but um yeah it is definitely just so that whatever whatever you pick up doesn't uh, end up down inside the cylinder okay so that is that's not going to work for us i don't think i'll just try and gingerly ease it in of course it's not the same size socket All right, it's tight there after a few turns, but it's obviously because the bottom of it is bottomed out rather than... Well, let's have a quick look and see. Okay, right, so I've changed the uh, changed approach here. So the one I'm going to use is actually this one here, because if you look at the treaded area, the um, the, the little uh, the pipe that goes down only just goes down as far as the shoulder on the glow plug, because if you go any further, it just binds up inside the head. So uh, we don't want that. So let's, uh, let's just tread that in. And the next, next thing we need to do is we will need to uh, disable the fuel pump. So that involves basically uh, disconnecting the fuel cutoff solenoid. Fuel cutoff solenoid is in there. Take the nut off it and uh, it's just underneath the, the pump head here. Take the nut off it, undo the wire, put the nut back on so you don't lose it. And job's a good one. Okay, right, so that is that. So next thing we need to do is we need to put the compression tester on and uh, get cranking. Okay, so this is gonna be the cold compression tests. So we'll be doing two. We'll do one when the engine's cold, and then what we'll do is we'll heat the engine up and we'll do another one when it's hot. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually climbing into the van and the reason you can hear me perfectly is because I'm wearing my wireless microphone. And you guys can keep an eye on the gauge back there, so. Number one. Right, let's have a look and see what compression we're getting on that. Just shy of 400 PSI, so that is not bad at all. Okay, so that's, that's kind of um, 380 PSI is what we're getting there on that. So, you can see why a uh, petrol compression test, you just blow the bollocks out of it if you even attempt to use one for this. So, um, yeah, it's a different tool for the job. But the thing about it is, this compression tester I bought 
and 55 euros. And I would imagine a garage would probably charge me in around that money to uh, to do the job. So at least I have the tool this way. To be honest with you, that's a lot of the reason why I find myself with these tools is because of the fact that buying the tools is the same price as paying a garage to do it. And I say I got to do it myself. All right, there we go. Now, same situation again. You guys keep an eye. I'll let you look over that direction. Okay. So now if we get around the same, we're looking basically for uniformity across the four cylinders. That's the, the main goal here. If you don't have uniformity, you, uh, you have a problem. So let's have a go again. All right. So that's cylinder number two. And we are getting 360. Close enough. So, all right, so we take that out. Okay, so now number three. Okay, and what's our number? 308, uh, 360 again, same as last cylinder. This is the fiddly one, it has the injector pipes in the way. And I have to keep, take that injector pipe out of the way, which is annoying, but anyway. All right, they come off in a kind of a pair. They're just tied together that way. So anyway, right, let's see if we can get that thing on now. Okay, that's on. So now I'm gonna spin it over and have a look and see what our compression is. Three eighty, three eighty five even. Okay, so we've got good compression when it's cold, so that's not obviously the problem. I kind of said after this point, folks, that if this doesn't cure the problem, I'm just going to leave it be and just leave it, live with it. Um, like if it was a case where I was coming back with low compression, I'd hunt it down. But like a fuel pump overhaul for, you know, it's four hundred quid, and for the amount I use the van, that's a lot of diesel, you know to gain like i don't know anyway okay the glow plugs are in i'm just putting on the injector pipes so we can give the engine a run so we can do the hot compression test but to be honest with you i think it's a waste of time because you know as i said you're looking for a difference you're not looking for a um like if you were getting low compression be one thing but like when they're all consistent you know 360 380 you know that's they're all well within the ballpark of each other it's kind of a percentage that they're within you know so all right i'll start it up now anyway it'll sound like a sack of hammers for a minute because the uh uh two fuel pipes were off so it'll take a few seconds for them to bleed out but they will they'll do it on their own when the engine's running Oh, forgot to reconnect the bloody uh, fuel cut off solenoid. Right, we'll try that again, shall we? Oh, uh, I have a new exhaust to fit to it as well, by the way. It's, uh, it's in a box beside me here, so 
that's why the engine's not sounding great is because the uh, exhaust isn't on it so turbo does make a nice little noise though I'm just looking at underneath the van here, right? And now there's just no exhaust on it. Look at the oil dripping from the bloody turbo. That's from the exhaust side of the turbo now, not from the bearing housing. So, if it's leaking on the exhaust, like on the turbine side, you can be sure it's leaking on the compressor side as well. So I'd say that's probably the cause of our smoke anyway. But there again, it is boosted kind of annoying because I bought a new center housing rotational assembly for that turbo and rebuilt the bloody thing. So annoying. Look, as far as oil leaks and smokiness are concerned, I could live with that for a while, but like, uh, what, 3,000 miles on that turbo and that's, the people I bought that off are going to be getting a negative review, I can assure you. That's what you're up against. By the way, while I have you, the next task to be done on this uh, MGB behind me is going to be to put the engine back together. So, you might not want to miss that, so keep, uh, make sure you hit subscribe and I'll uh, keep you updated on my progress on it. There's still lots to do on the Beetle as well. And I'm just waiting on the, uh, the van's engine to heat up and then we'll do the compression test for it while it's hot. Alright, good enough. Right, let's get those glow plugs out. I don't want to have it hotter than the fires of hell, in fairness, I need to be able to handle things now, you know, so these are going to be hot coming out of here. Spun over faster there now because obviously it got a bit of charge into the battery, so it might even get higher compression if anything. Uh, 380. Sa same thing again. 360. 25 bar if you're wondering if, if, it's, if you're of the uh, metric variety. It's down a little bit actually. It's down to 340. Yeah, so there is a, there's a bit of drop in pressure in that one there. All right, last cylinder. Let's see how we get on with this. Anyway, it's still good on that cylinder as well, so we're, yeah. Anyway, that's kind of annoying, so that's not the problem. Anyway, look, I, I think, to be honest with you, there comes a time in any project where you just have to call it, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna call it. It was just, to be honest with you, the AHU engine conversion was a bloody waste of money. I would have just put another AAZ in it if I'd known to tell you the truth. It's just not worth the hassle. It really isn't. And if you're going to maybe put an AFN engine in it or one of the PD engines, then it might be worthwhile. AHU. No. I mean, it, yeah. Sorely disappointed, I think, is the uh, term I'd use in this one. But anyway, look, at uh, it drives, you know, just still drinks juice. Um, I mean, 30 miles to the gallon is crap. Um, and uh, yeah, it just won't hold motorway speeds. So I suppose I just have to accept that that's, that's just the way this is. So anyway, um, I'm not spending any more time on this. I will, I will be doing other jobs on it, but I'm not gonna spend any more time trying to troubleshoot it or anything like that to try and find out what's going on. The fact that I got a good compression test on it and all the sensors are okay, uh, says a lot. That leaking turbo is gonna give me a headache in the future as well. So I'm looking forward to that. That'll be nice now, that's, that's exactly what I need. Anyway, I have the Beetle and the MG to think about, and um, I've also got many other things to think about as well. So, we'll leave it there. So, thanks for watching, folks. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and leave your comments down below if you have any insights or anything like that. And uh, I will chat to you in a future video. Thanks for watching.